Ignite Talk with Fellow 2021. I'm sorry, from guys. Kenya. My Ignite Talk is on how are we excluding? Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Dorothy Ateno Lensa. Yes. I'm Mandela Washington Fellow 2021 from Kenya. My Ignite Talk is on how are we excluding? A few, a few years ago, I needed uh, help uh, against discrimination from the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. I went to get help for about one, one and a half years, 13 months or so. I was never helped. Um, so when I asked them, uh, when I got the chance, why didn't you help me? You know, they started saying, you know, maybe you are too impatient. You didn't come enough enough times. You didn't use the right processes. You you didn't you are you you, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. Um, anything to make it my fault that they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Well, a few days ago, um, I was at a leadership class, and uh, the leader, the the teacher, um, he said, you know, um, mothers. They are, they, they are the channel to loving their children. If you get the, if, you, if your father hates the mother, the father will abuse the child, which is of course not true. So I argued, you know, that that's a lie. Uh, a man's a man's parenting is not less than a mother's parenting. So a parent is a parent, and abuse is abuse. And uh, the the argument was, um, you know, those cases they are saying they are special cases. Um, you, you, that is the reality. You are just pretending it's not because uh, you want your own agendas and so on and so forth. Anything but to help to hold ma men accountable for their own terrible parenting. How are we excluded? We are excluded by the complacency of people that should act. We are excluded by being vilified for wanting and expecting to be included. We are excluded by narratives that paint us as burdens. And we are excluded by narratives that look at ourselves existing in marginalization and saying, this is the inescapable natural order of things. We are excluded by your actions. People with disabilities are being excluded in Africa. Businesses will say it's too expensive to include them. Politicians will say they are special cases. Civic, the, civil the civic communities will uh, have their own reasons. But at the end of the day, your actions are marginalizing a vulnerable group of people. I want to ask you today, to assess your programs, to assess your, your, your NGOs and your nonprofit and, your, and the places you work in, if you realize that people with disabilities are regularly, continuously and consistently being left out, be a reason for change. Create that change. Tell them, show them, 15% is not too special, it's not too rare. It's just enough people that you have to have reasons as to why they are not being included. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dorothy, for that fantastic. one that and all. Sorry, guys. Hold Life on a minute. is like a cycle. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dorothy, for that fantastic talk. That was outstanding. Um, so do we have any quick responses to Dorothy's talk? I saw some, some great feedback in the chat. Anyone else like to share any comments about, about Dorothy's talk and this question, how are we excluded? Um, we've got some some comment in the chat here. A beautiful speech, absolutely great, great woman, great Dorothy. Um, Dorothy, would you like to share a little reflection about how you came to this topic? Okay, hello. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes. Um, I came to this topic after reflecting. I had a mentor who sadly passed away a few years back, and uh, he, he told me a story about himself. He told me he'd gone to a uh, 
a, a seminar and they were it was at a very expensive hotel and they were and they were sitting at a buffet and because he could not serve himself he was blind as well he was told by the staff there to sit and he'd be served and uh, he was served i believe rice beans toast and a wedge of uh, oranges and a glass of water and uh why, why not, somebody came and asked him why are you eating these things and there's uh, there's pizza there's uh, the, the good food and uh when he argued, you know, that those, he was made to feel greedy. He was told, at least you got to be here. Why are you complaining too much? And one of the things he told me before I started working was, you will be denied equal opportunity or if equal inclusion with people, and you'll be made to feel bad for it. For him, he was made to feel greedy for wanting more, and he'd already had the privilege of just being at the buffet or the seminar as a whole. And... Uh, well, now that things are opening up more and more in Kenya, I'm giving away this. I'm giving the same services, and I'm meeting the same things where you are, are seeking to get my clients places they, they are being excluded from, and it's uh, the client that's being made to be bad. I'm being made to be a victim of his or her badness, and it's just everything is that it is our fault. You are here. This is how it should be, and uh, yeah, we are being blamed for it. And it's not even just for us because I I sometimes interact with refugees. You know, I mean, I. Maybe there's this talk that the people that beg on the streets are from are from Tanzania. So there's already that hate from them that you know these are illegal immigrants. They're already committing a crime by being here. So they should not be given a money or their corn men if they are Kenyans. So you find that there's a lot of talk where people who are being marginalized are being made to be the evil people and their marginalization is being made to be just. And I'm beginning to encounter it again. And so I decided to write on how are we excluded and I didn't want to speak specify for disabilities because it's for a lot of marginalized groups and that's the culture meeting here in Kenya and it's both in the official and in the social world so even the politics and the laws here they, they seem to think this this is about people being marginalized thank you yes those are those are outstanding reflections and an outstanding question right to structure this talk around um, we're going to move now to Sharuna's talk, which got many votes of acclamation from her colleagues here. So I'm going to move into sharing my screen for this. And here is Sharuna. My mother uses this plastic rope to hang her laundry, ties it to two trees, and swears it is the strongest. Last week, another mother discovered that her son had found a different use to the strength of the same rope. She found him hanging from the ceiling fan. As a practicing psychologist, these are the only times I go back home and cry. Cry out of frustration, but also because a suicide means that we as mental health professionals have failed because nothing will ever be the same for that mother who was left behind. And because most probably we will never know what pushed that young man who it's an act of desperation so final. At his funeral later that week, people were quiet. The priest carrying out rituals hesitant and nobody asked how he died because suicide does not exist at least not in this part of the world. In Mauritius, where I live, and many parts of Africa, statistics come from hospital registered for those who have committed suicide and criminal records of the police for the reported failed attempts. Almost nothing is known of those who have intentions of committing suicide, those who try and are unsuccessful, and nothing of those who live with undiagnosed mental health issues that get so bad that sometimes killing themselves seems to be the only option. Suicide research in Africa is limited by a lack of systematic data collection with less than 10% of countries reporting mortality data to the World Health Organization. Much of the available published data are based on small studies conducted in different regions and populations. Experts suggest that these are likely to underestimate the true magnitude of the problem as religious and cultural sanctions 
may lead to suicide being underreported, misclassified, or deliberately concealed. This serious lack of reliable quantitative data and almost non-existence of qualitative data means we do not know how and why people are deciding to put an end to their lives. This in turn means that when dealing with suicide prevention and potential underlying risks, health professionals, educators, and policymakers are all shooting in the dark. The year 2020 in Mauritius has highlighted the inadequacy of interventions and policies aimed at suicide prevention, which are not evidence-based and not contextually relevant. We saw an increase in suicide cases and attempts at suicide during the pandemic lockdown that was not reflected in many, many countries. Case studies show that the causes often pointed out by vague statistics did not apply to the recent ones. It wasn't always the teenager, nor always the middle-aged man in a financial crisis. That night, hanging from this end of the roof was a young father of two children with no records of medical illness. He had a stable job and everything one could possibly want from life. Mental illness is ignored because it tends to be invisible. But if we continue ignoring these desperate cries for help, then what are we doing if not helping tighten the knot? Right, thank you. Thank you so much, Sharuna, for that, that very powerful presentation. Um, so we have any quick, quick responses to Sharuna's talk that you wanted to share? We're seeing a lot of... A lot of applause. There, there were many, many strong votes for your, your moving talk. Um, Sharuna, do you just want to reflect for a moment on the process of putting that together? I think that's a very, a very difficult topic to broach. Hi, Megan. I want to say something. I don't know oh, if you sure, Yeah, please. Um, I just wanted to say that I particularly liked this. Um, just because, not just because, it's um, something that's not talked about in Africa, mental illness. It's not, it's not talked about in Africa, actually is um, people who, who seek help actually um, either shamed or tried to hushed by their family members. People are usually scared to talk about uh, mental illness. They're even, they're even ashamed to ask for help. And we see people who, who die away or who lose themselves as a result. So I particularly liked this message um, and thank you. Thank you for delivering it so well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So much. yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. I also want. Sure. Come in. Yes, of course, Charles. Right. I, I think yeah, it's a it's a wonderful it's a wonderful speech, and when I follow it, uh, I was actually moved by the demonstration. Uh, when I saw her with a rope, I said, "What's going on here?" And she really demonstrated that how people. Uh, go about taking their life through that and, and, and in a different way. But the point that struck me most was um, taking responsibility. The accountability is the failure on the part of those who have the expertise. And as, as she, uh, as someone who is a psychologist, you know, having people committing suicide and then it's not been talked about, it's being ignored. Uh, it should be something of responsibility. And I like the way she put the point that if this is happening and we're not talking about it or doing something about it, then we should hold ourselves responsible. We are responsible for, for this. And I actually want to bring that to leadership because um, when we see our people are not doing well, when people are poor or marginalized or not really getting the best out of life, we should hold ourselves responsible. We should hold ourselves accountable. We should think that it's not just their fault for them to face the reality or go through some of the situation they are going. It means that we, we, we must pay attention. I, I was telling my students that 
sometimes when people complain about situations and stuff, there are people to listen. And if people they complain to don't listen, then it's not really their problem because they, they are people who have been given, who have the chance that we are having now to go through such a holistic process to solve all those problems, to be able to have compassion, to be able to work for the betterment of the society. So if we are not doing that, then we should hold ourselves accountable. And I think bringing change begins with us holding ourselves accountable for the challenges and problems people face. So that was really the point that I really um, enjoyed from the speech and it's quite touching. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Charles, for those comments. Those are a very important theme of accountability, which has been something we've been addressing in various ways throughout the Institute. Um, one more comment from Madaleno before we come to Sharuna. Oh, you're muted, Madaleno. You're, I'm not able to hear you. Uh, hello. Oh, hello, now I can hear you. Yes, it's a very, a very deep speech. Sharuna is a good speaker, and I told her before this Ignat talk. Uh, she brings up a neglected subject in Africa. Sharuna uses a very practical example. She also makes a very good use of what we learned in, in the Ignite talk sessions. Congratulations, Sharuna. Thank you so much. Sharuna, if you just want to share a brief reflection on how you came to this, this powerful talk. Thank you very much. Um, I did it at the very last minute, to be honest, because I, I knew from the very beginning that I wanted to talk about that. Uh, but to be honest, I didn't know how to actually put it across so it, it would hit home in a way. And what I actually wanted to talk about, and at the last minute I decided that that was a bit too harsh, was uh, one, of the, one of the police officers that I am following up with at the moment uh, who attempted um, suicide with, um, so he tried to uh, shoot himself and he missed. So uh, half of his face is, uh, is, is, is healing and he can't talk. So for me, for these months uh, that, that, that have gone by, uh, I, I meet this person very often. And what I can see is not just the helplessness, which is physical of that person, but to what extent that struggle lasted and nobody could, could do anything. And he never reached out because of the stigma. And that was even being in a small contained environment where I worked. Now, I kind of imagine how much worse it is when it is, you know, for country at large, and even in Africa at large. Uh, my focus project is based on mental health. And the aim is actually to cover the whole of Africa, different countries, um, bringing light to mental health, encouraging research, um, just having the conversation, especially amongst stakeholders, um, professionals, etc. And I'll be reaching out to all of you to try and find collaborations and to really try and make it work, because I feel this is really very serious. And, you know, we could do whatever we want in terms of policies, in terms of um, development, in terms of, of financing, but if people are not okay, um, in their minds, in their bodies, I think to be able to make the most of what is available to them, what they could seek as 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 help. It could be, uh, you know, financial. It could be any kind of help. They need to feel empowered. They need to feel okay uh, to reach out and to really want to do something for themselves. Thank you very much for this platform. And a lot of this is the Ignite talk was very helpful, but I'm also at Toastmasters for a long time. And because I did it in a rush, I didn't show it to my, I went to get help and try to like, you know, write a speech, rehearse, et cetera. But time was very short. So you can see me reading through it, but it was, it was, it was a great opportunity. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Sharon. All right, and we're going to move now to our next talk that was, was highly voted by your fellow fellows, a Shaba's presentation. Let me share our screen again. Talk about gender equality. One of the things that comes to mind is quality education for the girl child to be able to catch up, you know. But how about girls in rural areas? girls who are often forgotten and yet these are the girls that face the most challenges when it comes to attaining quality education 
girls who have to walk two kilometers to school who cannot afford basic human necessities like sanitary pads, soap. They can't afford all the things and yet they have to be in class and attain that education. How do we talk about that? So one of the things we do through my organization is to tackle some of the very basic needs as to why girls drop out of school. And for me, my focus is girls because being in a profession, I am a pilot and one of the few in my country, being in a profession where I get to be surrounded by only men, it makes me want to you know, fight for girls more because I know what it means to be in that particular position. So I've seen girls struggle, you know, they have to walk two kilometers to go to school, they have to have to do house chores, and then on top of that, they cannot afford basic human needs. And what we do through Bambino Life Foundation is we go on ground and we tackle some of those reasons as to why they drop out of school in the first place, and we try to work on those. So in cases where they cannot afford sanitary pads, we train them how to make their own reusable sanitary pads, which are both good for the environment, but then they also last longer. There, a girl does not have to worry about that time of the month when it comes around because she's comfortable. And what we teach them, all the skills we teach them, among others, like how to make liquid soap, these are skills they can always use when they need them for either commercial purposes or domestic purposes. They can do these same skills to empower themselves and make money out of that. If they make pads, they can sell these pads in their communities to other older ladies or even younger than them, you know. That is how we empower them both uh, through education because now we make sure that, that we have tackled some of the basic needs, we know that they're going to be able to go through school. So many girls have dropped out of school because they cannot afford sanitary pads. And I know it is ridiculous, but if a girl is supposed to be in her period for four days, every time that time of the month comes around, if she's missing school because of those days, it's going to put her back when it comes to school years, you know? So those are some of the problems that we tackle me with my team. But also using my platform, I'm able to show these girls that if I came from humble beginnings like yourself and here I am in this particular position as a pilot, so can you. You know, Do not let your surroundings tell you who you can be just because your finances show that you cannot go higher. That is wrong. You, you can go to that next level if you believe in yourself, you know, if you believe in yourself. And that is why we teach those girls. But before that, we first tackle some of the problems as to why they are not in school. Then we go ahead and then now we offer them these options of you can dream bigger than your situation or your surroundings. And I'm very proud of the work we have done. We have impacted over 4,000 girls in the four years that we have been working. And this is a passionate journey for me. And I'm looking forward to you know, taking what I've learned here and exploring that and taking it far beyond what I've been doing and impacting even more girls out there in rural areas especially since are the girls that are always forgotten and the ones you find married off young and with early pregnancies and all of that. So I'm happy to share with you my story. My name is Ashura Farid and I'm a pilot and the founder of Bambino Life Foundation based in Uganda. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you so much. And I'm sorry about the volume on that. That was the maximum volume. So I'm, I'm sorry if there's nothing else we could do about that. Um, but thank you, Ashaba. That was a brilliant talk. Uh, do we have any quick responses, impressions of, of Ashaba's talk, connections that you can make to your own contests and, and issues facing girls? Sorry, they can't hear me at all. Can you guys hear me? No, they don't hear me. Okay, they can hear me. Okay, great. Okay, okay, no worries. Okay, so yeah, any any responses to Ashaba's talk? Right, well, Ashaba, if you want to just speak for a moment about how you came to put this talk together. Um, thank you so much, uh, Megan, and. Uh, Congratulations to every single one of us today. I'm very happy that you know we are at the end of this. Uh, when I was putting together that talk, what came to mind is that I wanted to use you know my story 
and we know the power of storytelling, I think the African narrative. So uh, through my story, through humble beginnings, I've been able to come from where I came from to where I am. And through the work that we have been doing in the foundation, that is something that I've been reflecting mostly. And when you reach uh, in these grassroots communities, you find that so many girls, when you talk about education, these are the girls that drop out of school and yet most of the people operate in cities and they always forget the rural areas. So going on grassroots communities, being able to do that work myself every single time, you listen to these girls and you understand them. But more than that, I've also grown up in the rural areas at one point of my life. So I go to them because I really understand what it means to be in their place. And then we are able to help them to make sure that you know we help some of their problems that they're going through. So rather than just donate things like sanitary pads, it is very important that you teach for sustainability or for long-term sustainability and then other different skills. So for me, I believe in women. I believe women can you know, do anything they set their mind to. And I believe that uh, our finances or our society, because so many people in Africa are not fortunate enough to be in cities. So you have to also look in the rural areas and let them know that, you know what, you can also become something of yourself. You can also, you know, be anything you want to be and all of that. Yes, so that, that's what I was thinking about. And that is what I really uh, wanted to share and to let everyone know that the girls in rural areas should never be forgotten and we should always cater for human basic needs. As much as everything else is important, the basic needs are what make sure that we go the next day. So yes, yeah, so I wanted to share that with everyone. So thank you so much. Again. Thank you so much, Ashava. This was a beautiful speech. And we so we so appreciate it. Many excellent comments in the chat, um, including Cynthia making some connections to American context. Thank you very much. Um, we're now going to move to Chisholm's presentation, our very last of the Ignite Talks. Yeah. Sorry, just a moment, guys. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. all right, let me, just a moment, guys. Let me, can everyone please mute yourselves? I'm not sure where that, that noise is coming from. Okay, all right, we'll go back to share. All right, great, thanks. Great, thank you, guys. All right, and Shizam, here we go. Hey, hi, everyone. Um, I'm sure we've all heard about Boko Haram crisis, the former Heather's crisis, the banditry, and most recently, the unknown gunmen crisis in Nigeria. But have we ever heard of the Lake Chad crisis that cuts across Nigeria, cuts across Niger, cuts across Cameroon, and cuts across Chad? This single biggest climate change crisis has caused the reduction of the Lake Chad, Lake Chad water by 90%. It has reduced the agricultural and farming activities around this area by 90%. It has aggravated the movements of headers from the north to the west, leading to heightened insecurity and loss of life. But most importantly, this single climate change problem has given rise to the high number of internal displacement in Nigeria. I'm here to talk about the unwilling victims of the Lake Chad crisis. The 2.5 million internally displaced women, children and men that now live in Dangote cement bag houses. So instead of using the cement, they're using the bags to build the houses. And this Unfortunately, these houses are roofed with rice bags. How have we protected these people? How have we tried to make a difference in their lives? How have we made sure that they don't go back to that devastation that has drastically changed their lives forever? The answer is in speaking Sweeney. So a lot of people ask me, what is Sweeney? Is it an African language? Is it a Nigerian language? But I like to tell people that Sweeney is simply the language of skills. Sweeney is the language of education and Sweeney is the language of action. So the first time I visited Kuchinguru camp somewhere in my neighborhood, I saw everything that could go wrong going wrong in one place. 
I saw sexual molestation, I saw child harassment, I saw domestic violence, I saw drug abuse, homelessness, out of school children, lack of jobs, I saw everything, everything in one place. That visit was supposed to be a one-off visit, but I told myself I was going to come back. But how was I going to come back? How was one woman going to make a difference? How was I going to make a difference with all of these people? How was I going to try to change the narrative for them? Well, I did go back with the little I had. I went back and I got a few girls. I got a few women and I taught them with the help of my friends. We taught them textile upcycling. That was a skill I knew at that point could be, could, they could learn easily and something that could help them generate some sort of income. And since that weekend in October 2017, when I and a few of my friends stepped to, into that camp, we have ensured, as of even as of yesterday, that over 100 women working at our Sweeney Vocational Skills Center, we went on to establish a Sweeney Center where women come to work and earn more than $10 a day. This is so much higher than the $1 that 82 million Nigerians earn on a daily, according to our National Bureau of Statistics. So through sewing, fish farming, upcycling, cocheting, and other vocational skills that have touched me and my group of friends, me and my group of volunteers, we have touched the lives of Zara, Yahaya, Laitu, and 5,000 other IDPs living in 18 different camps in North Central Nigeria. We have created a learning, earning and blending method that can be replicated in any part of the country and across Africa at large. My organization, the Skilled Women Initiative, is using climate education, access to sustainable livelihoods, and tailor-made, group-specific entrepreneurial training to change the narrative for IDPs, refugees, and forced migrants in Nigeria. This is how we're making a difference. This is how we're making a change. My name is Chisum Wanko. I'm a climate policy expert, and I speak Sweeney. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chisholm. That was another another exceptional speech that connects very eloquently to Ashaba's comments as well about the importance of the potential of women and girls. And I saw that Madaleno made a comment about women's women's success in this group and in the chat. Um, so any any other responses to, to Chisholm's excellent speech? Charles, oh, is that is your yeah, Charles? Is your hand is that an, is that from before or do you have your hand up again? Charles, did you want to share? Um, I like the, the, the aspect of, um, yeah, the connection work and, and also linking that much impact profess or tell people, uh, about something, but how you yourself have achieved it, how it has happened through your life. And I think one of the things that makes an um, impact in my seminars I always end it by sharing my own story I have made it. And most often I see that people relate more to that because they tend to say, okay, if this person can go through such struggles, if they can go through such challenges and difficulties, if they have made it through to this level. And then in that way they connect and I think they can't forget about that. So I noticed that most of the speeches that made it to, to, to the top, uh, um, have that connection, which I think is a very, it's a very good strategy. I think as we move ahead, we should be thinking around that. Some of the things we struggle with, some of the things that that have challenged us, whether it's failure, whether you know falling and waking up, are things that other people are struggling with right now. So almost they are at the point of facing what we faced before, and or what they are likely to face in the days or months ahead. But something that will keep them encouraged is you hear from someone who has been there, who has been ahead. And um, that's, that's very good. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for those reflections, Charles. And Adora, would you like to add something? Yes, I definitely would want to add something. As, as someone who is also from Nigeria, um, I understand what happens in IDP camps. If you've never heard of the IDP camps in Nigeria, you can easily just Google Nigerian IDP camps, and you see what it looks like. And Chisum is not exaggerating when she says that the houses are uh, roofed with, with rice bags. It's not a joke. And I also commend her for what she's doing because 
people usually run away from um, working in IDP camps. You prefer to raise money and send to send there because it's not a you never it's never a favorable environment to work in. You're also going to face a lot of security challenges. So a lot of organizations are not in a hurry to work in the northeast or not like anywhere around the north. So I commend the work that she's doing, um, and I understand how difficult it is. So well done, Chisholm. Absolutely, yeah. No, I think that there's there's so many connections with your work and hers, and I think you know your your talk as well. The new oil, right, connected to a lot of those really important points about you know all all you know how to deal with all of these problems facing facing us now. Um, any other comments on on Chisholm's talk before we turn the floor over to Chisholm? Chisholm, would you like to just share a little bit of a backstory or how you came to put that talk together, reflections on it? Okay, hi everyone. Um, good evening. Luckily, I wasn't expecting that. Um, and when I heard ready, it was like, okay, how did that happen? Um, but thank you so much for the vote. Um, that's a lot. So basically, like Ada said, where the number of um, IDP comes in, in the country so much and they're literally at a backyard and people seem to be unaware. And like I just said, a lot of people don't get to work in those camps. They probably just come, say hi, you know, give some sort of food and, and that's it. So for the past four years, we have constantly tried to provide something that hasn't been done before. So it's been very, it's been very difficult because what we have done is try to um, just plug and play. If it doesn't work, to take it out and all of that. But it's been a very inspiring journey. And so I thought, I thought okay, we could probably, I, I should talk about that and you know, share what it is like to share those skills. Yes, they might look like little skills, like the story, the protesting, but I know the type of um, how it has made a difference in the life of the women and all of that. So people are beginning to hear their stories. And you get to meet women that cross over to Cameroon and then cross back to Nigeria. And some women that have to carry their children and their head in bags so that they won't get killed and all of that. So it's been a very um, inspiring journey for me and my team. And then um, we is actually the acronym for my um, NGO. So, and then on our t shirts when we go to work, it's written I speak to me. So people are always asking, oh, what's the Nigeria language? And we're like, no, this is what it means. So, when people see us now, so they're like, oh, well, we want to speak really with you. So it actually makes a difference and all of that. So I just thought, oh, I should share it. And funny enough, when I posted my video, I posted the wrong video first. And um, I called him and I said, ah, thank God I didn't post the, the video of me in the kitchen. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I'm just grateful. And it's been an amazing experience. Every, I, truthfully, I never have said that my sister came to me. Amazing speaking. Everybody had, like, amazing and inspiring to So thank you so much for working for me. And um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Chisholm. That was, was an exceptional speech. And these issues of climate change and women's empowerment are so relevant to so many of us. Absolutely. Um, and as Binyam just said in the chat, right, he didn't know anything about the Lake Chad crisis. So this was a in a short speech. I think you both made connections to issues that many of us are, are working with and grappling with. And you also taught us something very important about Nigeria and the region. So thank you so, so much. Um, great. So we're going to be moving soon into the next part of our program, our graduation ceremony. Um, as as we prep for that transition, uh, Wing Wing Kai is loading things. Yeah, up for we're that. trying to. <laughs> let's talk about some of the final thoughts about that before uh -huh. we, we do the certificates. Sure. I invite um, all the folks here to actually the coaches if they have any quick comments before we each of us uh, will say some words. Uh, before we present the certificates, sure. uh, because as core team leaders, we really committed to this program. We've seen you grow so so much over the last six weeks, so we we definitely have some feelings about it and wanted to share with you. So before we do that, any quick comments by the coaches? Well, I didn't. Uh coach any of the group that spoke today. I, I am honored to have met this group of people this, this summer. It has been uh, my honor to learn from you, to educate myself, and to share my knowledge. And I just want to thank each and every one of you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for your work. Um, yeah, we were so honored to have two librarians this year, which was great that we were able to make those connections with you and our, our BSU library community. That's fantastic. And yeah, it have, was awesome. Yeah. And I have to say, Himwitwa and Alan, your speeches were great too. We were really, the, the core team, we were all really touched by your discussion of the importance of literacy and, and civic engagement. Um, other coaches, other reflections. Another coach here. Oh yes, and you are. Yes, coach. Yes. 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 I I, I know I had more than enough <laughs> time to speak yesterday, to but um, but I just wanted to um, comment. I've been a Shabbos coach, mm -hmm. and I just want to say how very proud I am um, of a Shaba and her growth and her courage in overcoming obstacles, uh, which she's been doing all of her life, and and mm -hmm. set certainly and very high um, bar for others. I remember in one of my conversations with her, and I don't think I'm revealing confidences, um, she said that one of the um, techniques that they use with some of the, the girls that they run into in the villages is um, tough love, saying, you can do this. You have the strength to do this, to rise above your circumstances. And uh, I, I just am so admiring of the work that Ashab has done that many of you have done, and I've had the privilege of having a little deeper dive into Ashaba's life, and I want to thank her very much uh, for trusting me and including me in her journey. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wendy. Thank you. And, and Dr. Wendy yeah, has been a, a really important part of our team, not only for her stewardship of the CLC program, which we've been honored to have her do again, um, despite her very busy schedule as, as an assistant dean in the graduate school. Um, she's been just such, such a gifted mentor and such a remarkable part of this group. We really, you know, we, we wouldn't be able to function without Dr. Wendy, for sure. And we, we really appreciate her, her mentorship of, of Ashaba in particular. Um, other, would any other coaches like to make any reflections or share a few words? I see we have uh, Dr. Burak, uh, Dr. Davis Street. We've got maybe all the coaches that are, are left. I know we had a couple of others that were able to join us briefly earlier. But, um, but we appreciate, again, to all of our coaches, right? We appreciate all of your, your generosity with your time and your expertise and your care for this, this amazing program. I will just um, echo Cynthia's remarks and say that it was a true honor and a privilege and a real learning experience for me and kind of a trip down memory lane into um, African communities. So thank you very much for the possibility to do this. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is, I know that this, this summer is very busy for many of us after an unusual and stressful year. So we, we all appreciate your time so much. Um, so, would you, uh, Jabril, would you like to share any thoughts? You want to come over here? I don't know if you're logged in over there. Oh. oh, okay. So, I'm all right. Uh, well, I'm going to need to close this up. Yeah, you can just minimize it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, all right. Could, could actually, could Jabril speak on another device then so I can work yeah. on that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so Jabril, if you want to speak on the okay. Larry Winka, you want to share this your phone? Sorry, I got to load up the next part of the program. Uh, we're, we're going over. Or is that going over? Okay. Will that work? Yeah, that will work. That works. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, thank you so much. This was a wonderful experience working with all of you and, here. And, and watching you all grow. I remember when we first opened the Institute, looking across all the squares and the screens and looking at your faces. Some of you look very uh, excited. Some of you look nervous. Some of you were wondering what will happen next. How will all of this work? And it's exciting to look at the same squares now today as we're ending and listening to your speeches and um, your presentation of my talk, but also throughout all the different sessions, your commentaries, your, your, your participation in whether it was uh, the leadership session, the community service sessions, and all the presenters. And um, it's been amazing to watch how much you engage in the process 
and how much we have learned from, and the possibility of the endless. Uh, I can imagine from this group of the Mandela Washington Fellow, which by the way, I would as one of the best groups we've seen in a long time, the, the talent, the caliber, the level of education, the professionalism we've seen in this group is something we have not seen in quite a while. So it is a super talented group of students. You are all very gifted people. And um, there is no doubt in my mind that, that your futures are bright and we will be hearing from you and your accomplishment as head of states in many African countries, as top leaders, as change makers. So um, I'm excited to see what you do next. Uh, but I know that the sky is the limit and whatever you do next will be very exciting. Um, we, we are committed to continue to, will continue to support your work in way, shape, or form um, as you move forward. So don't hesitate to circle back with us. And I am personally excited to have the opportunity, hopefully soon when travel opens, to travel to Africa. I'll be reaching out to all of you because I'm excited to travel to Africa to do a research project and looking for all of you. Okay. So what you this is just the beginning, not the end of the journey we have just engaged in. You are now alumni okay. of Bridgewater State University and forever. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who? So we yeah, every time you see this. And your hard work and your commitment and your the excellent work you're doing, regardless of the art. And um, mm -hmm. uh, we're excited okay. to see what happens next mm -hmm. and how we can contribute to your mm -hmm. success from Maori and the show them that you take the we, that we are committed to support you, that you will reach out regardless of the project because we have resources and we know people, even if it's not directly connected to my expertise, um, I'm affiliated with all kinds of organizations and people and professionals. Many of them I brought to the fellowship to do presentations. But there's always a way we can find uh, opportunities to connect you with other people, other foundations, and other professionals. Good luck to all of you and uh, stay in touch. I never say goodbye because I know that we still have work to do. So bye for now, but not goodbye. And I look forward to our continued work and collaboration and your continued success in Africa. and. Um, and uh, in the world. Take care, everyone. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, you know, stay strong. I know I've teased a lot of you and, and it's all in good spirit. It's just because I feel very comfortable with all of you throughout the session. And uh, I hope we continue the spirit of collaboration and working together. Good luck, everyone. And we will um, carry on. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Solomon. Um, it's been it's been a real pleasure to be working with you on this program. I'll just turn down the volume on another device. Okay. Thank you. It's, it's been such an honor for me to work with Dr. Solomon as, as such a distinguished colleague in this program. And again, to work with all of you. It has been such a privilege to get to know so many of you in, in such detail, right? I know things would have been different if we were on campus, but I feel like we've we've really done a lot as a group um, in our live discussions to build a sense of community in your WhatsApp discussions discussions that are ongoing in your sharing of music and your sharing of experiences that you've had in your personal lives and careers that really exemplify the best of what the Mandela Washington program is about, right? You're, you all, as we discussed yesterday, you all bring such different types of leadership skills. You all are asking so many, so many different urgent questions that are going to help us to, to really build a better world. And it's really been a privilege for me to get to know all of you in this program. And you know, as I've said before, this the, all of our discussions. You shouldn't see this as a kind of ending point, commencement. but rather, a commencement. rather, this is a commencement, as Wendy just said, right? It's a sort of a, a moment, opening up a new stage in your leadership journey. Please continue to connect with all of us 
in the fellowship program as a whole, with your mentors, with your colleagues, um, and with all of us on the core leadership team. We really look forward to continuing and seeing how, how you continue to grow and impress us in the future. So thank you so much. Um, and Kai, do you want to you want to hand over the uh, before the before I, uh, we do the graduation ceremony, Dr. Jabbar also would like to say a few words. Okay, thank you, Kai. Uh, it's just an honor to speak with you. I have the chance of working with all of you leaders, young leaders who are uh, really. Uh, to engine for our future in Africa and to our collaboration. Two important projects of work. And so I enjoy the moment that I, I had the chance to participate and listen to your comments. You're really uh, very for the speeches or the speeches described, you know, to you don't think it's a winner or not. But this is all of you are winners because uh, you are joining the journey and you are you are going to continue. As uh, you will say, this is not the end of the project. This is the beginning of the project that has just and we here at BSU are your president of it. Definitely that uh, our campus is your campus. Uh, we are here to help you and to make sure that you realize and realize whatever we can do. And I want to uh, thank you for all our coaches, faculty, librarians, and staff, and also the team, you know, from my guys and me to make it to work together. And you know, I'm, I'm not formal, I'm always formal. I don't like to always talk about it. And uh, and also uh, you have you have really a chain of support in you know, BSU and uh, we are uh, always honor our work, especially for those like you who want to also honor their work and work with us. Because uh, to me, as a communication and media uh, faculty, uh, I, I believe in the middle ground. Middle ground is already is all, always good because then you can unite people people to your side. So we are on your side and hope you stay with our side, your side, our side, because we have the need to continue to serve our community, to serve our students, if we are teachers, our patients, we are doctors and nurses, to also benefit our society. Congratulations and uh, please uh, forgive any short call because that's what I intended. Thank you so much and enjoy. Uh, the rest of your day of your graduation. Thank you, Jabbar. And I wonder whether Tammy wants to say a few words. Wow, <laughs> I'm excited. Um, I don't know if I should say I'm blessed or lucky to be here because um, my role as the program assistant is so meant to assist you, but you've been able to um, bless me with um, your inspirations, you know, with your great words and great works as well. And I'm inspired. And I just want to thank you for allowing me to work with you. I want to thank um, the coordinators for allowing me because um, they've um, mentored me in ways they don't even know. And that's all I have to say, congratulations. I'm here for you. Um, some people have reached out to me to say, okay, can we collaborate? Can we um, keep the friendship? Yes, please. My DM is open. Congratulations to you all. <laughs> and I, I apologize, I intentionally uh, uh, mentioned uh, our dear, uh, actually collaborator, um, assistant, uh, Kemi. So thank you, Kemi, because I didn't mention your name. That is fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, we couldn't have done it without you. Oh, we no. so, we exactly. so. Exactly, exactly. No, one guy, uh, send yeah, it to you. Because I'm, I'm the last one to speak and uh, they've spoken almost everything I wanted to say. That's the, <laughs> that's the, that's the problem of being the last one to congratulate all you, you guys, right? So, um, 
it's been such a great journey, even though we met only for five weeks. I feel like I've known you for five months, not just five weeks, right? And it seems like it's very intensive, even though we only meet, met three times a week or four times a week, four days a week. Um, we've been trying to follow you and you've been trying to follow what we do and work together to accomplish all the requirements of the Institute. All the things you've done, as all the core team says, about the Ignite speeches, about the focus projects, about the community service presentations, about the uh, reactions to CLC curriculum, they seem to be overwhelming because there are so many requirements, but you've done most of it already. So I think when you look back, you can actually learn a lot by in three months or six months, they will continue to be very useful for you. So um, you also learn how to access to all the materials on Canvas, which is a new platform for some of you. It's for some of us also, we are not used to using all that kind of tools, but hopefully you're able to watch all the things that are so exciting to all of us, including not just what we did for the Institute, but for all the other experts across the country and that offer a lot of advice. But to, to say that last but not least, we are actually proud of what BSU could offer to you. We're proud of every single one speakers who've done, whether they're internal speakers or external speakers. Of course, we're proud of President Clark, who has always been so eloquent as our leader of the university. We're proud of all the experts from the Department of Education, from the social services, from the African diaspora communities, from the Harvard centers, from all the experts, the, all the way between the academic institutions the community organizations, and also the government institutions. So think about the nexus between government, community, and uh, education. I think that's the key theme of our institute. We really focus on education and community, but we also hopefully have brought a lot of ideas to all of you. So. Like previous year's alumni, we keep in touch always. So please keep your WhatsApp group. You can keep it forever. There's no limit for your WhatsApp group. <laughs> so you can continue to connect with each other and with us. Uh, you're welcome to connect with us on LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Now you know all of us, so feel free. And most importantly, you have all our email addresses. So if there's anything we could do for you, we will continue to support you. Thank you so right, much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So next week will be summit time on Tuesday and Wednesday. You hear a lot of um, ideas about, you know, meeting other fellows in the summit, but we'll be also popping in. You may not be able to see us as regularly as the last few weeks, but please join the summit for all the hours you actually uh, meet a lot of other people because it's going to be very great, very networking. great, great experience. Yeah. Yeah. Networking. And you should, yeah, and you should have received an email from IREX with more details about the summit. Sorry, I was just trying not to sit on top of you. Yep. <laughs> you should have received an email from IREX with more details about the summit. There's a lot of interesting events. We're going to have a lot of distinguished speakers. I understand there will be a talent show not sure what you have to prepare for that, <laughs> um, but it'll be a fantastic opportunity to meet more people in your fields and more people from your countries and regions to really deepen these connections as you, you take the next step on your journey. So we're, we're excited to see you back there next week as well. So I don't know if Washington DC has told you about the uh, certificates that each university is going to give it to you, the formal certificates. Um, they are being mailed to your institutions. So if you have other, we will follow up with them and you can also follow up next week and see which addresses they have sent it to you and whether you have received them or not. Um, so today we're going to show you what the certificate looks like and we'll be congratulating all the people who are graduate here. And um, 
I don't know whether we can share the screen of that certificate. Can you share the certificate? Yep. All right. So this is a, a mock-up of what it'll look like. <laughs> Just a moment. Okay. So, so this certificate will introduce all of you as honorary alumna or, or alumnus, as the, the gender may be, of Bridgewater State University. Um, and it says here, Bridgewater State University is pleased to award and the president to confer the certificate of completion for the Mandela Washington Fellowship for Young African Leaders Summer 2021 Leadership and Public Management Institute, and to recognize you as an honorary Bridgewater State University alumna or alumnus with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities app appertaining thereto. Um, so this is signed each of these by President Clark, who you've had the, the pleasure of meeting a couple of times. So, so we, you know, we're, so yes, and your names will be there, of course, in lieu of congratulations. So these should be arriving at your home soon. And as, as President Clark has said in, in both of his visits, you will now be members of the Bridgewater State alumni community. That means that you have all, all of the, as you see, all of the privileges that, that entails, connection to a great network of alumni, um, including you know, graduate students in public management, like the wonderful Kemi, <laughs> including uh, you met some members of the Afro-AM Alumni Association, who are leaders in, in their communities, who are leaders in business. You know, you're, you're really entering into a really distinguished community of, of leaders in government, education, business, et cetera. So welcome. I don't know if anyone else wants to say anything here along those lines. You give us, yes. you give us hope oh. for the future. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It will be a wonderful and ever improving world with you in it, um, contributing to your communities mm -hmm. and caring about each other. Mm -hmm. um, we have the next half hour before we um, finish today's graduation ceremony. Of course, I congratulate every single one of you and um, even if we don't read your names aloud, you know who you are, the 25 of you. So um, every single one of you will get a certificate. So um, congratulations. Um, um, can we all collectively give a round of applause to the graduates? So, um, Unfortunately, we cannot do it very quickly, sh sharing 25 certificates at the same time, but this certificate is the example of everyone would get this identical certificate. Now, um, actually we'll have a surprise to you to have a campus tour before we end the meeting. So you can see what our, you are in a, in a room right now. You're actually seeing the screen. Can you see this, the outside? Yes, yes. Can you stop can you stop sharing? Yes, so yes yeah. we, can, we can see it. Yeah. Yeah. We can see it. Yes, we can yes. see it. We, we, we can see it. They're very excited about it. So <laughs> before we do that. Yeah. There you go. Um so you wow, are in so the nice. science building. This is the room, conference room we are in. Say hi to everyone. Hello, hello, hi. We will take a walk outside. We'll do the tour, but I will con um, connect to my, either with this laptop or with my own phone. Yeah, I will use my yeah. cell phone. Um, it's, you're already yeah, on already it. Anyway. yeah, I'm on it. But before we, we go out, though, I like to spend maybe five, 10 minutes. If there's anyone uh, raise your hand and want to say something, I saw two people already did it. Sure. OK, yes. Yeah, so so have some reflections. Yeah. So Shago and then Charles, you want to share your closing reflections? Not a reflection, but I wanted to ask, which I thought would be a nice idea, if those of us who can switch on our cameras could, and if we could take a picture of all of us together. I'm not, I'm not sure if we were going to do that. Yeah. But I think it's quite nice. Um, but I also just wanted to oh, thank you sincerely, so um, to thank you sincerely, and to thank okay. all my fellow leaders, and wish you all well. Together. Can we do? Three of us. We'll do. All right. So everybody, turn on your cameras now. 
a screenshot here. Good idea, Shaga. All right, I'll give you guys a moment. If you can turn your cameras on, please do so. It's like funny six of us here crowding <laughs> in the screen. Okay. All right. Well, not everyone's cameras on, but that's good enough. I like your thumbs up, Madalena. Nice. <laughs> right. One more, one more time. One more. Okay. Oops. I think people are working on turning their cameras off. Sure. Could wait a, a moment longer. There's one. Jabari, you want to? Oh, okay. oh, yeah. It's just your your thumb is on your face. That's okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Pretty funny. Thank you, guys. <laughs> any any last reflections? I like to hear some graduates' reflections. I know that you're anxious to yes, see Char the campus. Yeah, Charles, you had your hand up as well. Charles, please. Yep. Um, wow. I don't know how to start, but this is this is this is awesome. When we were beginning this program, I had high expectation that it was going to be a wonderful one. But as as we started it from the first day, from starting with the networking, I knew that I was even underestimating what uh, was going to be received from here. Um, for me, the past six weeks and even moving forward have been uh, some of the best days of my learning. I've been learning from, from nursery to PhD, but having had such a wonderful experience as this, even though it has been online, but to be very frank, having had such a wonderful experience as this, maybe one reason we've had some of the best brains put together for the fellows. And then a team that is so dedicated, committed to, 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 to give the best they can get. Um, so that's why to me, this is, this is actually uh, in my life, I'll record this as part of the best moment I've had learning. Um, exploring the materials. I, I was even sometimes, some of the materials that we had um, from the CLC, uh, materials to, to, to the one in the um, in, in public management track. I was wondering how exceptionally people could put materials together that are so rich with a lot of information. You know, they, they are so exceptional. And I was wondering, I say, wow, we are all trying to work ourselves to make the universe better. So you are not just impacted us during this, but you have given us some uh, experience and resource materials that to me are going to last with us for a lifetime because we, some of us have downloaded all the talk from, from all the, the, the areas and, and document them so that all the time we can be able to reflect and go through learning from the best minds around the world. So uh, when I said, I think it's the best moment I apply my learning, um, that's, that's what I really, I really mean from the materials, from the contacts, from the best brains we have, uh, so first, I'm grateful to God for the privilege to be among you, um, and then to, to to my fellow fellows who you know have been so exceptional working together and learning. Sometimes you know when you really working among exceptional people, when you think you're working among few people who are not exceptional, you think you are ahead. But when I came working among and seeing the profile of other people, I I felt that I haven't done much. You know, because normally in, if my, in my environment, like if you have 100 young people, I could be among the top 10 or top five. But if you come among your colleagues and start seeing how much they are doing, you know, you just tend to tell yourself, well, I haven't done much and I need to do more. So to me, that's a push itself. And with the content, with the materials, um, I want to thank all my fellow fellows uh, for that. And I want to urge us to keep working. Thanks to the team. You have also given a true definition of, of, of leadership. You, the way you work as a team and we sort answers in different areas, you hear, you keep lively. You know, we, we really will, will follow your example. So thank you so much. The final thing I want to say is that the board is in our courts. We have been challenged. We have been given the resources. We have been empowered to do something as, 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 as uh, fellows, Mandela, Washington fellows. So the most important thing is how we utilize what we've got, how we utilize, how we reflect 
on this and take more proactive actions to make sure we truly reflect what we have been given and what have been given also other people can also benefit. So thank you so much once again. And you know we will definitely keep in touch with you as much as we can as we push forward to climbing the ladder to making or creating a much better world. Thank you. Charles, uh, we'll take up Bello next. Bello, welcome back. Honolulu Bello, we're so happy. To okay, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. I know that many people didn't see my face for a long time, neither hearing my voice. Uh, but thank you very much for all the consideration for those who wrote me and so on. I'm not going to go deep in the. I'm not going to go in the problem because today is the graduation ceremony, a day of happiness, a day of great hope. Uh, so it is just to. Say really, with all what you have done for us, we are really grateful. And I'm I'm taking the risk to say that you are going to be surprised even more to see what we are going to become in the next few weeks, next few months, and next few years. So I'm talking even for others. I'm sure I am not. Uh, I am not even. I am sure that everybody here is going to be the best of his own state and. It is just the beginning. It is the end, maybe for the six weeks, but it is the a new beginning for the whole life. Thank you to the fellows. As I wrote earlier, I said it is surprising to see people uh, in a group of more than ten working with such a harmony without uh, we realizing that there are some people who are unhappy of what others did, and so uh, so it is a very wonderful. It is a very wonderful group. And thank you to all of you. Thank you to the staff and uh, to Kemi, our assistant, uh, your, or the, the assistant of the program, uh, because she has been monitoring everything, writing even the inbox messages and so on. So it is really wonderful. Thank you to everyone. Thanks to fellows. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bella, and welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's take Simche next, please. Simche. Oh, you're muted, Simche. Or you're, we can't hear you. Try again. Can you get me now? No, yeah. I can hear you. Thank you. Sure. Now, now we, oh, now she's muted. Sorry, now we can't hear you again. Please unmute. There you go. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, I want to say thank you to the entire BSU team. This has been amazing and inspiring. I have learned a lot and I have grown as a leader. It's like before the past six weeks, has, I don't talk much. I believe in writing, but I have grown um, and learned how to use my voice the more. For the past six weeks, I have learned from other fellows and thank you to all the female fellows. Indeed, you have inspired me to continue my journey in gender equality because I know your impact and input during the six weeks has given me strength to do and become more. I just want um, to tell the BSU team if they can please develop a, B a feedback form, which we can feel because we don't know what will happen if we're going back to normal after COVID or what will happen. So it will create room for improvement. We'll give our feedback as fellows, what we enjoyed, what are the gaps and create room for better improvement. Okay. Thank you and hope to connect with you all. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Simche. And thank you for the reminder, actually. Um, you will be getting a survey from IREX inviting you to provide feedback on the program. So you should be receiving an email about that, I believe, by the end of this week, if you haven't already gotten that email. And you'll, you can submit that next week as you're working on the summit activities as well. So thank you so much, Simche. It's, it's been such an honor to work with you. You've had fantastic comments in the chat every single session. <laughs> so you, you've definitely been using your voice and deepening our conversations. Uh, wonderful. So let's take Justino and then Sharuna. Hello, 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 everyone. Uh, it's such a pleasure. So happy to be here today. It's been a very difficult year for me, but I thank God we made it, we're still here, which means uh, God has been protecting us, which is the reason why we're here. Well, I, I, I just would like to thank you all very much for, for caring for me 
Dota Megan, uh, Dota Winka, you've been sending a lot of emails, check on me to know actually how I was going. Fortunately, I couldn't follow up with the program because I was very sick. But well, here I am, it's not too late, going through every miss session. I'm learning a lot. I'm so amazed how systematic the contents are. So such an amazing experience. I think we're the first virtual generation and uh, we're just kind of trying to do something very different so that actually uh, nobody can forget about everything that we're learning here. So thank you so much once more again for the opportunity. Thank you so much for the meeting. Thank you so much for the knowledge that you share with us. And we promise we're gonna do something very different in our communities because we are leaders and we, call, we were called to do different in our, in, our, in, our, in our communities. And we promise that we're going to do uh, all the difference in our communities. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless you all, and we're together. Thank you, thank you, Justino. And we're so we're so happy that you're able to be with us at the end of this program. It's, it's wonderful to see you. Um, Sharuna, would you like to share your comments? Thank you. Um, it it has been very hard, and I'm still not done. I, I still have a few of the asynchronous work to go finish. I'm planning to go finish my uh, project, uh, my focus project as, as well, and submit it. So that's been very hard because um, it was not something that we did full time. So uh, along with this, the you know life went on, and uh, especially you know in and out of the pandemic in Mauritius, so that was very hard. I want to share two personal things that touched me and that I will remember forever. Is one I don't know how you matched us with the coaches, but they were amazing human beings. Uh, beyond the expertise, there was so much kindness, there was so much openness. Um, my coach was uh, Dr. Judith Willison, and sometimes I felt like she was a mind reader. So she was there, and before I, I wanted to say anything, like she, you know, so that was an amazing experience. And I think for me, that made me feel very special. Um, even though uh, this was a virtual experience, at that point, it didn't feel virtual anymore because it was very personal, it was very contextual. It was really um, that person with all her experience and everything that, you know, she, she's accumulated over the years. She kind of like, you know, kindly, willingly, and with a lot of humility, puts it to your use in a way to kind of like push you forward. And that was really something that I'd be always very grateful for. And the second one is something very personal to me. Um, I think this is something that many of you will recognize. Over the years, as you try to fight against sometimes a system that is not completely just, um, when you are especially within the, the, the public service, you try to bring changes. And sometimes you're labeled as uh, you're like a troublemaker, or you're trying to, you know, this is something that is very Mauritian. You try to buy work in a way <laughs> by making changes, et cetera. There is a point where you start thinking in terms of, am I really the same thing? Am I not too ideal? Uh, is it, you know, am I the only one who's wrong? Because sometimes it doesn't match. And because the, the ratios sometimes tend to, um, in a way, uh, tilt more towards people who are just happy doing things the way they, they have been, uh, you know, going on, even the that does not uh, anymore respond to the challenges that we're facing. So for me, what was really special was that uh, when I came here, when I got to meet all of you, um, you know, all of our amazing BSU staff, uh, people who've made the changes that sometimes we dream of in a, in a lot of ways, and then all of uh, the leaders who are working day and night fighting against systems that are so deeply, deeply ingrained in our culture and society, that hope comes back again, you know. So for me, this is what I would take away, that you might have a lot of people against you. Um, things might not be working the way you want it to work. The progress might not be fast uh, enough for you at this time, but this is the right thing. And for me, what has kind of, um, you know, brought this back was how much you all were here for us, not just as a uh, you know, um, staff members, but also as 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 individuals sharing uh, personal stories, sharing uh, some of your experiences, sharing 
just, uh, you know, we, we really toy with this concept of intellectual humility in Mauritius, because sometimes as you, as you move on and get more experience and learn more, uh, the humility side of it tends to go down. And this is what's been fascinating with all of you. I think this is what I will take back that, you know, you always are open to learning from everything, from everyone, from every situation. And this is something which is really amazing. And I think none of us should forget that. And I look forward to more. I look forward to collaborating. I look forward to the project actually taking shape and making those changes that we've been speaking about with so many of the fellows and with you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharuna, for your, your always eloquent remarks. That was fantastic. Sarah, would you like to share with us now? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm so happy. Like, um, at the same time, I, I feel so sad that the six week uh, went so quick. And I just wish like what I wrote at the WhatsApp group, like I wish IREX could extend the, this uh, six weeks to go to three months at, at least. Uh, we could um, learn more of the practical work, but um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, we got this chance. It was a golden chance that to, we have uh, managed to learn many things on leadership. Uh, and I'm sure like uh, we, we public uh, servants, we are going to at least uh, um, uh, improve the, the service that we are offering to the public. And, and I'm sure uh, what we have learned from the uh, BSU will make uh, our, our country stand out and, and even make people uh, more satisfied with what we do. And as leaders, I'm sure one day we'll make uh, Africa we want in, in place. And there, there are things that I wish to the group should should even start thinking of. Like um, I I know like uh, BSU we all the the management like we had so much uh, we had many things that we have learned. So if we will stand out in our countries, like uh, we are going to make BSU proud of uh, what they have taught us. And, um, and I'm sure among ourselves, we can even organize ourselves and have uh, the in inter projects. We can visit some countries and have our, our joint um, projects as what we, were, we learned from connection. And uh, sometimes if you, uh, if you let somebody else to come to your country, can help you even uh, uh, generate something good and people will be ready to listen rather than from your own self. As we, we have a, a saying, like we say, the prophets have never been um, recognized into their own countries. So through this connection or this networking, it's a platform where we can we can advance our things or even make them better and make other people even feel what we do as important to, to our countries. And the last thing, I don't know what will Rx do, but uh, I remember we there was an email that sent us like there are few that are going to be selected to come to America in some time in some time but but i wish like um, the the lucky people or the privileged privileged ones should be asked from bsu to come to boston and and meet you guys that will be our, our biggest uh, and, and like what what can i say like our big, biggest thing that uh, we'll be achieving out of uh, our visual program. But uh, thank you very much. And I feel like I'm somebody new from what uh, I, I was before. Thank you very much.
you so much, Sarah, for again, your, your always characteristically eloquent reflections. Thank you. And finally, we'll wrap up with a Shaba. A Shaba, please. Um, thank you very much. I, my video is off because of electric problems, but uh, I just wanted to say that this has been such an amazing experience and I just want to say, Dr. Wendy, I am so grateful to have had you as my coach. Uh, at some point, it seemed like, you know, friendship and all the, you know, everyone that is listening in right now, I want you to know that never forget, you know, your passion in the very beginning the reason why you know you apply to this fellowship because sometimes we get sidetracked and we lose the passion of you know our original path what we wanted to do in the very beginning do not forget who you are do not forget the very reason why you started helping in your societies because believe it or not not everyone is doing what you're doing so take that at heart and you know that you're doing so very much and we learn that the more we help our brothers and sisters the more we add advance as ourselves and the more we attract abundance into our lives so you're doing so much you know, helping your societies and your communities. Never forget why you started what you started doing. Never lose track of that and never forget that. I'm so grateful to have met each and every one of you. Megan, sorry, Megan, uh, Dr. Kai, everyone, everyone has been doing amazing. And Dr. Wendy, thank you so much for being there for me, for being patient and, you know, for just, you know, getting to know each other. It's really been an amazing thing. And as a sign off, I learned with my Clifton test that my number one strength is connectedness. And I believe, you know, all of us, you know, as human, we are connected uh, through the kindness that we do. And sometimes, you know, it's connections that, you know, take us where we are. It's through knowing people, but you can just know people if you're not nice to them. So always spare a minute, you know, and ask your friend how they're doing and be nice, you know, because you, there may be the answer that you've been praying for from God. And that's what connectedness teaches us. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure and I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you. That reflection on connectedness and gratitude, I think, is an outstanding way to wrap up these remarks. Um, so, Wing Kai, I think we're going to move over to your phone as our, our master device for a brief tour of campus. I know that we're a little over time, so if you need to leave, that's fine. Um, and we will see you all next week at the summit, so this is not our final goodbye. Uh, just a quick logistical reminder, as, as is my want uh, for this week, you should try to submit your focus projects at the end of this week. If that is not possible, next Friday, the 6th of August is the ultimate deadline. So that's your last deadline to submit your focus project worksheets uh, via Canvas. Your LDAP, er, sorry, your LDAP project, sorry, for me, hard for me to speak with my mask. Your LDAP project, you do not need to submit to IREX. That is simply for your own use and your own development as you move further into your leadership. Uh, you'll also, again, be asked to submit that survey. Um, you know, just make sure you've submitted all your paperwork. We know how much IREX loves paperwork <laughs> as you wrap up this institute. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Cho. I'm going to close myself out. Speak this video so you can see me and. Dr. Toe, you're muted, sir. We can hear you, Dr. Toe. Dr. Toe, you're muted. All right, now you can hear us. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can. Yeah. All right, so now we're still walking. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we can just talk. Yeah. We're going to show them. I know. I'm going to talk about that. <laughs>
and this is the campus building. And you see we have some study spaces here. And um, there's a nice place for students to come here to sit around and learn. And as you can see, this is the corridor I was Let talking about. On, on the Which one? Why don't you Let do it? it? How do you flip it? Okay. See, like when you walk and you see, you can you see me and you can just have it, but you'll see me. Okay. Let me do it. Even if you have it in front of you. Like when you're taking pictures. I know, but I'm in the zoom mode, which is oh. which is different from the camera mode. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm a little confused. It's, okay. it's zoom, it's not camera. Is everyone still here? You can. <laughs> How's the building? Do you like it? Can you see outside the campus? We can tilt your camera or your phone a little bit, Dr. Toro. It's a bit high up. How is it? Mm -hmm. Much better. No, it's, it's, it's so nice. 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 Is it nice? So there's some nice. <laughs> Okay. okay, so your camera. camera. No camera, go back here, camera. And flip it to. Okay. Is it flip? Flip the back. There you go. When yes, video, okay, so let's go now back. Now, when you go to Zoom, the Zoom is automatically going to the same settings. Yeah. Go so back to Zoom. Go back to Zoom. It didn't work. It didn't work. No. It works for me. Sorry. Same thing. It's about the same. We can see it anyway. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Let's go. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we go this way. We go this way. We're taking the video anyway, Kim. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. let me just just sign out. Take a video too, Kim. And then okay. you can send your video to him. I'm taking some here. this morning. I'll last the last I'll group later. How's the building? Do you like it? I know it is. You know what can I say? How is BSU? Do you like it? Yes. Beautiful. It's beautiful. We love it. Very green. Very green, yes. This is yeah. the building. This building is actually, uh, I said, a mil half million of what? I forgot how much it cost to make this. Yeah, it's awesome. This is a brand new science building. It was built, uh, finished a few years ago. Okay. <laughs> I think it's doing well. They can still hear us. So all these glasses go. The connection. Hi guys, can you still see this? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we can see it. Yes. Yeah, we still. Yeah. See, say hi to them. Hi. <laughs> hi, it's nice. No, we don't have our, some of us don't have our mask. <laughs> I, I don't have my mask. The outside. 
today's graduation. So That's so much you need down. So we were in this building, science building earlier. Okay. okay. Tayud University. Yes. Let's wow. uh that's, that's let's go that, to Boyden. That seems to be a very huge university. At least we could be there for a week, just for a week. Mm -hmm. Then Dr. Winkai, maybe yes. you should do something with the IREX that uh, among the people that should come to to st United States, one one among the people should be people from BSU. Definitely. You need to come and see that paradise. This is our um, student wow. union. So we have uh, actually graduates here. <laughs> Everyone can feel free to come in. I'm not just the, the only tour guide oh, here. That's, that's <laughs> can't believe we lost it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe our preparation weren't so good. That's why we didn't get lucky to go to Bridgewater University. Uh, one of our dormitories here. This is a student residence hall, student dormitory. It's called Pop Hall. I'm going to show you the main building before we end the tour. How many of them are still here? <laughs> Did a lot of people still? Dr. Winkai? Yes. Out of curiosity, can I ask you something? Yeah. Uh, uh, I've seen uh, people missing, like students missing from universities or from schools. Uh, sometimes they are taken with these uh, psychopaths, serial killers. Are there such kind of events or incidences in Bridgewater? You mean, what incidents? What do you mean? Like um, there, there are incidents like uh, people are taking with serial killers from, from educational, like schools, people are missing. We, we have... Uh, our campus is considered one of the safest campuses in the US. Okay. So the okay. crime rate is very low. Okay. Uh, we of course have a criminal justice department that okay. study crime. Yeah, so this is the art center here. And on the okay. other side, you do you want to see Dr. Megan's office? <laughs> this is the, this is We the only building. see the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor Pope, turn we your camera down again because it's looking up again. So we're seeing the sky. So you need to put the angle. Oh, you're seeing the sky. Okay. 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 That's Did Dr. Megan. <laughs> I'm so, oh, your phone is not charged. I was charged, but it was like. Can you guys still see me? No. Oh, okay, let's go. Kemi, Kemi, will you do it? We have lost the video. They've lost the video. Yeah. Hold on just a second. We'll come back to you. Uh, okay. Waiting. <laughs> um, do you guys enjoy the campus so far? Yeah, very it's much. Yes. <laughs> I'm showing awesome. you this guy also. Why not, Dr. Winkai? <laughs> All right, now you are the tour guy. We changed tour guy. I'm happy and fired. <laughs> I'm fired, so you. you... <laughs> I, I don't know about psychopath, but I feel like a stalker. Like we're following you guys everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. This is Winkai. Yes. That's what I'm thinking as well, Sharuna. <laughs> this is. Uh... 
one day. And this you could show them the church. The church is That's the church. Yeah, we'll take a selfie. We'll take a selfie in front of them. In front of Boyden. You're not stalking us. You're just. I don't know how many people are here. Still, maybe half of them still are. Congratulations. Your face is show me that all of you want to fly now straight to Bridgewater. <laughs> I wish we could have such a wonderful experience when we are at the Bridgewater. Yeah, of course, of course. You're right, Sarah. <laughs> and my video died. I saw that. I thought <laughs> <that> you... <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I was recording just the, the video. Just That's video. why I said I have to turn to you. It's like, you know. Okay, we're going to say the video. We'll say something. Yeah. Uh, the last thing. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Happy commencement. And bless you all. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they are on this. Are you guys still here? Yeah. Here, there, here they are. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm on Zoom. So we're going to say farewell yes. before things get more complicated. So we're just going to show you where we're going to This is where commencement activities usually take place. So allow us to say, Congratulations. Congratulations. And again, Congratulations. we're so excited to continue to work with you. Congratulations. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Happy graduation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. See Bye -bye. you soon. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Have a good summit. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm, I'm, I'm saying bye-bye, but I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs>